It is Free Radio. I'm Adam Wilborn. Joining me on the show, very pleased to say now, James from the Manic Street Preachers. Hello. Hello. How are you, sir? Yes, very good. How are you? I'm OK, yes, now I'm, I'm, I'm ready for action. <laughs> it is good to have you on the show. Great to have you guys um, back. It's been a few years uh, since the, the last album, the National Treasures Complete Singles Collection and the and postcards, of course. How's it been over the last few years, sort of the interim between albums? Uh, well, we're kind of institutionalised workers in the studio. <laughs> kind of, uh, we, kind of, uh, we took this two-year break off not playing in Britain. Uh, we said we just won't play in Britain for two years because we've been we've been going for quite a while now, <laughs> and um, and we did that O2 show where we played thirty eight singles in one night, and even before then we'd started work on this new record, um, so we've just been burrowing down in the studio in Cardiff and just getting on with it really, and you know we're not in the studio working every day, you know we do treat it, treat it as a pretend youth club for the over forty sometimes, <laughs> um, but that's what we've been doing. Well, exactly. I mean, you, you did earn yourself a well-earned break, but it's not like you've, you've not been doing a lot. My favourite thing you've been up to recently, of course, uh, being on tour with the Rugby Lions squad uh, over in Australia. And uh, how was that for you guys? Yeah, kind of, um, you know, we can have uh, the British and, Irish, British and Irish Lions were down in Australia uh, you know, for the Test Series. And, you know, I remember when I was 10 years old, I wanted to go on a British Lions tour. And then I got to 20, I still hadn't done it. I got to 30, I still hadn't done it. And 40, of course, still hadn't done it. So <laughs> we made a plan. We just thought, right, you know, we're going to do it. We've always wanted to do it. And if we can mix pleasure with pleasure, a la playing gigs and watching <laughs> rugby at the same time, let's do it. And we kind of, we got it past the wives. And, <laughs> and, and, uh, and it, was, it, it, was, it was just a truly amazing experience from, you know, top to bottom. Uh, one of the kind of players, Jamie Roberts, came on stage and played with us um, at the Melbourne gig. And uh, so, kind of, when he scored a try in the final test, yep. you know, it was a uh, we pretended that one. Uh, it was the first time one of the Manchester preachers had ever scored for the British and Irish <laughs> Lions. So it was cool. It was really good. How did something like that come together? I and mean, obviously, getting it past the wives is, is is the first stage of it all. But in terms of, you know, I'm, I'm sure a lot of bands would like to go and tour um, with the with the British and Irish Lions, especially the squad that we took to Australia, a very promising squad. How how does something like that get organised? Um, well, we kind of did it outside of the record industry because, you know, we're kinda, we've had some success in Australia, but we're not the biggest there. Um, so we were depending <laughs> on 20,000 kind of like British fans being in, being in the town, you know, um, the night before the matches, etc. cetera. And, um, and that's why we banked on it. And it worked, you know. We did it outside of the record industry. We didn't have anything to promote except for having a good time. <laughs> and uh, it was a very unmanic-esque thing to do. There was no manifesto behind it. There was no... Yeah, ulterior motive except for just to go and play some rock and roll and watch some rugby. And it was kind of nice to do something that simple and and that kind of joy driven really. It's not a bad working holiday to have. And and you were you were busking on the streets, I see, with fans and things like that? We were. So I was kind of it's kind of weird, you know, this band that have done loaded songs like Design for Life mm. and Faster and Motorcycle Emptiness with all these lyrics in. Suddenly I was on the streets of Melbourne singing Oogie 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 oi, 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 <laughs> to 2,000 Lions fans. So it was slightly bizarre in that respect. But um, it was our version of just having a great time and, and even a bit of our baggage behind, I suppose, really. Uh, and like you said, you had uh, Jamie Roberts being a guest guitarist with you, but that wasn't your only run-in with a, uh, a Lions player. What happened with you guys and Shane Williams, a sort of hero of yours, I suppose? Yeah, kind of. We got off stage in uh, in Melbourne, and uh, the, <clears throat> we were on a high, and we were just going down the, down to the dressing room. I thought I'll just allow myself, you know, just two bottles of beer, you know, just nothing too much, and I'll keep the throat in, kind of like in in check for the next gig, kind of thing. Medicinal just, beer, I like that. <clears throat> medicinally, yes, yeah, <laughs> a, a herbal lager. <laughs> and um, open the door, and just Shane Williams is just rooting round in our fridge, <laughs> just like drinking my beer, and he's like. Sorry, boys. Do you mind? I was like, no, you're a legend. You can drink all our beer if you want. So it was, it was really weird, you know, backstage. You know, Jimmy Roberts was in the dressing room. Lewis Moody was like, you know, you know kind of like you know, an English you know, legend, rugby player. And they're both 6'4". And suddenly I'm having a picture take with them. And, <laughs> and I'm in the middle. And it, it looked like, you know, a hobbit with two orcs, basically. <laughs> or it looked like the dip in the middle of the Clifton Suspension Bridge, you know. And... When that picture went round in the Twitter sphere, a lot of people had a laugh at my expense, definitely. <laughs> well, I think I saw um, uh, Daniel Craig when he went into the dressing room at the end of the final game, of course. Yeah. And when, when someone dwarfs James Bond, you know they are quite a big bloke. Yeah, it was weird that morning because um, we were in the hotel and uh, kind of Nick called me up and he was just like, I was just at breakfast with James Bond. 
I was like, why? <laughs> he's like, yeah, he's just flown in for the last test, you know. Uh, he kind of he didn't know, you know, a lot of Daniel Craig's kind of like a family from North Wales and he's a big rugby nut. And he just flew in that morning, got access to the British, British and Irish Lions dressing room and kind of like, you know, and just, you know, and he, from Nicky Wire, I breakfast with James Bond. So it was, it was a kind of surreal day, really. It was a really strange day. <laughs> but I kind of, we vaguely got half an eye on the next British and Irish Lions. British and Irish Lions tour in New Zealand in four years, but we're going to have to work on that. <laughs> um, but of course, that was a that was a big occasion for you. Probably only topped, considering your you know phenomenal career that you've had, by being mentioned on Coronation Street recently. It was a bit of a bit of a shaky dark storyline <laughs> in the way we were involved. Um, I'm not being at all maudlin, but you know, God, if if my mum was still alive, she would have been thrilled by that. She would have been. <laughs> She would have loved that so much because she used to call me up when we were on the jukebox in the back in the background in the Rovers Return. She used to call me up and say, "They were playing you in the background in the Rovers Return." So I was, it was I was a bit sad that my mum and mum never got to, to see that. And you kind of you've broken through. You've made it when you've uh, been impersonated on Stars in Their Eyes. <laughs> you've had a question on who wants to be a millionaire, and now we're part of a storyline in Coronation Street. And that's it. We've done it. That's the trifecta you need to achieve to be <laughs> a successful yeah. rock band. I like that. Uh, but now you're on your 11th studio album. Is that right? Are my maths correct? This is, yeah. It's uh, Shockingly, we're on our 11th <laughs> studio album. We refuse to go away. Um, and that's kind of strange, you know. Yeah, you know, my lifetime in this band, you know, you know, the career of the band has lasted a lot longer than some of my mates' marriages, you know. <laughs> and so that's kind of weird. That's a weird feeling sometimes. Um, my favourite thing to, to read about uh, uh, you relating to this this new studio album is talking about the amount of things that have changed since the band started all the way back in the 80s uh, and, and all the stuff that is is around now that, that when you were first starting up well, couldn't have even been dreamt of. Just kind of little kind of totemic things like, you know, uh, Richie never downloaded anything. Richie never sent an email, you know. Uh, Richie never had a mobile phone. Mm. You know, it's it's bizarre to think that kind of that we have stretched over these, like, you know, absolutely just uh, accelerated times, you know. The kind of, you know, we've lived through Britpop, Manchester, Seattle, you know, the noughties. And to know that everything has absolutely and utterly changed is... It's kind of, I think, it's affected our songwriting on this record, especially a mm. tiny bit, I think. Because um, there is a, you do get questioned as to why you're still in a rock and roll band when you're 44 years old. And and I suppose that qu- line of questioning seeps in to your, conscious, your subconsciousness a bit. And it comes out in your songwriting. You do start to question uh, things about mortality around you in your life, about losing parts of... Uh, the way of life that you grew up with, um, certain memories, certain people. Um, and then the other half of the record is is talking about, you know, celebrating the things that we still love and we still have present in our lives. So, yeah, it's a it's, 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 it's an altogether, like, strange thing, definitely. But the the new album is fantastic. The, the title track, uh, Rewind the Film, very much sums up what you're talking about there, a, a, f- a phenomenal, reflective uh, single on there. And... And what is it that that you, people can expect from this new album? Because, like you said, the new single "Show Me the Wonder," which is which is out on Monday, um, is what you were sort of talking about there. That's more of a celebration. But then also, like I said, "Rewind the Film" is is more of a, a, a look back over the years, I suppose. It is, and it, it, it isn't nostalgia. Uh, you know, "Rewind the Film" is an, it's an examination of the things that you still want in your life and how you hold on to them. Um, and it is brushed with immortality, that song especially. Mm. Um, <clears throat> uh, the rest of the records, you know, the, you know, there's a song on the record called uh, As Holy As The Soul, which is, I, I must say, is probably a love song to Richie, you know, from us, I suppose. Mm. Um, and then, you know, uh, there are certain songs like Tokyo Skyline, which is a song about just being in thrall to kind of like a metropolis that you don't understand. Um, you don't live in, but every time you go there, you feel an indelible connection to it. It's, it's almost a glory of, of being lost in something big and powerful. So kind of already, you know, you, you can see that kind of, I think we're kind of, it's a self-examination, but also there's an outward look in the record as to, to you know, we do celebrate things outside of us, which we feel inspires us. And there's an examination of things that kind of like that you're trying to hold on to. And it's it, as we said, it's been a few years since you released an album, and you said that once you finished, or once you were sort of coming together with this album, you realised basically you'd done enough for two albums. So we can expect another one in the spring as well. Yeah, we messed up. 
when we were just making the record, it was just we tried to start. To, we started tried to put uh, all the tracks together, and they just didn't fit. And, mm. and then the penny dropped. We realized we'd accidentally made two separate albums. <laughs> <laughs> so kind of like, yeah, that's the sketch of nature of us sometimes. And um, it's not probably the the kind of like the, the it's probably not the. The most sensible thing to do, uh, but we've done it, so there you go. And this is more of a, an acoustic album, the first one? It is, yeah. This this album is very much more uh, kind of this, this, this only one track with me playing my le- electric guitar um, on there, which is kind of strange because once you take, you know, you know, we've taken my electric guitar out of the equation and you realise how much space it fills up. It's such an egotistical, rampant monster, the guitar. <laughs> you realise once you take it out of the mix and... Um, things are very much more gentle on this record sometimes um, there's a lot of old soul kind of horn kind of brass brass, uh, brass influences on there as well a lot of early kind of Sam Cooke influences a lot of early Dexy Midnight Runners influences um, and there is a kind of uh, an introspection a bucolic nature about everything and it is touched with some kind of weird Welsh kind of soul kind of angle I'm not quite sure how to explain it really but just because it's acoustic not a hoedown it's not a hoedown, it's not a campfire, <laughs> we're not eating kind of refried beans, uh, we're, not, we're not kind of combing our beards or anything like that. It's not happening, no. It sounds absolutely fantastic, James. Um, the title track, Rewind, the film uh, from the album is just phenomenal. I heard it earlier on today and it's, it's beautiful with uh, Richard Hawley on there. Uh, the album, Rewind, the film is out September 16th. The new single, Show Me the Wonder, is going to be out on Monday. James, it has been an absolute pleasure having you on the show tonight. And uh, we're going to stick on the brand new single now. Do you want to introduce it? Yes. uh, This is the single from Manchester Pictures called Show Me the Wonder. 